Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Christmas. I hope you're all doing well. Guys, finally, we got the centre diff for Owen's Abzima torch. Now, I'm glad you a lot of you have watched that video. Um, there's some things you can take away from that on how to change your diff oil and what to look for if you've got issues and stuff like that. And how to troubleshoot when, when you've actually got a few issues with your car. Um, massive thanks to each and everyone who are obviously watching the channel at the moment. Really do appreciate it. Um, guys, honestly, we're on the cusp of 1K. Let's keep it going all the way up to the top and let's get it down a 1K goal. Really do appreciate it, honestly. Got a cup of coffee, uh, got some of the vape on, got the tools with me, and I've got the parts. Let's uh, make it happen, shall we? Um, as well, big shout out to all of you for watching the last video about the Mojave, guys. I've really enjoyed running that. You're going to see a lot more of that on the channel soon. So, Let's do what I promised and get Owen's Absima Torch Gen 2 uh, fixed up for him so he can actually come out for a bash with me and the guys. Oh, and big shout out to my wife. As you can see, she's made a lovely shelf where we do videos and stuff. It's actually the kitchen, but it looks really cool, doesn't it? Kinda, it kind of suits the wall really nicely. Anyway, let's dive down. Let's go from there. See you in a bit. Right, guys, so welcome back down at the table. Um, first things first. Big shout out to Owen and Matthew for actually getting this sort of organised and got you so quick. Little story for you, something quite funny. Uh, Owen's been waiting for this part. He thought it showed as the tracking is delivered. Uh, it turns out uh, what had happened is the postman spotted a window open, plonked it on top of his microwave and Owen forgot to actually uh, look for it for a whole day. <laughs> so it turns out he was in his house all along, bless him. Right, okay, so as you can see, we opted to go for the whole of the centre diff. Um, now, the reason being, when I looked at parts availability, um, it's actually cheaper, believe it or not, to get the whole centre diff than it was to actually buy the, the planetary and um, sun gears for this truck. So, brand spanking new diff there. Um, as you can see, everything's nice and new. It even comes with the bearings, so that's really nice. And I think it cost him a grand total. It might have been 40 quid, I think it was. But between him and Matthew, they've actually sorted that out. So what I'm going to do here, rather than work on this straight away, we're actually going to get the diff oil into this one. I'll show you um, how full this needs to be, all right? So, yeah, as you can see, all working lovely. All the diff cups are really, really nice. I've got no issues with that one now. Um, I'm going to quickly strip it, though. Uh, and probably fill this up to 500 now and uh, just so I know the whole of the car has had a full um, fluid service e.g. shocks, uh, rear, centre and front. Um, one thing to notice as we mentioned in the previous video if you want to go back I will put a link at the top guys in the eye. Um, the shocks now are absolutely lovely they have settled down great there's no leaking coming from the front there was a little collar at the bottom of the shock and what had happened by the looks on thing that collar had come undone um gonna pause the video check you on a time lapse a second and basically what we'll do then is strip that diff down i can show you what's in there i'm gonna then empty out what's inside and we'll go from there so i know i said i was gonna actually put you on a uh, time warp but to be honest guys what i want to do is actually take you along for the ride here to show you actually how you service your diff oil um because a few people have mentioned that on the channel as well um quite simple now bearing in mind obviously this part would normally be in your car make sure you got yourself two mil or, or whatever the actual size is for the screws now as you when you're doing these up just to make you aware obviously you need to do them in a cross pattern all right i've mentioned this on the channel previously slowly and gradually each one but taking them apart it's not so, not such a bad thing um with this car in particular it's two millimeter hex all right so we're just going to take the screws out quickly so make sure you got somewhere nice and clear obviously to to do this because you don't want to jumble up any parts or lose, lose any of the pins inside or anything like that get yourself some paper towel or in my case i've got a little bit of toilet roll here um just basically what you're going to do is drain out the center of this stiff all right any oils or any remnants that's inside there and you're then going to replace it with your own diff oils okay so make sure you keep all the screws neat and tidy all in one place 
you can see there's one, two, three. Oh, hang on, this one's not. Where's my two mil? There you go, one there. Oh, and one there. So that's your four screws, obviously, keep them safe. I'm not working on anything else here, so I can put them right by there. Normally, I'd have my uh, my ice cube tray that I normally organize everything. What I will actually do then, as you can see, on this scenario is release the gear. But then what you can do is just break open the top of the diff case. Now, guys, this is what I was mentioning. This is brand spanking new, all right, straight from Absima. And as you can see, see the difference in the gears? But thing to mention here is absolutely hardly any diff fluids inside there. Nothing at all. And what is, by the looks on things, is very, very thin as well. But that's a brand spanking new gear set there. So really, this should have some sort of diff oil in there. Um, they have put ugh, I, 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 not even a tablespoon in there, which is really, really not great. Now, I can kind of understand now with Matthew and um, the guys when, when they ran this car for the first time. The, these do need checking over guys before you run any rc car i'd recommend you definitely check them over because look this this has just come from the factory it's been pre-assembled ready to go back in your car now if you hadn't checked this chances are what's going to happen those those planetaries and your sun gear are going to get so warm when they're running uh, number one it won't provide enough resistance for your car really anyway but number two that's going to get so warm and what'll happen it'll shred all the gears again and also this diff case will end up getting too warm and melting out now i will show you at the end of the video the state of the other one um for anyone who hasn't watched the previous video but uh yeah that's not great what i'm gonna do now all right get my piece of paper and literally all i'm gonna do is just turn it upside down and leave it all you need to do is leave our now for a little while um and let all all the remnants of what they put inside back drip out and we're going to just move on to the car now. Right, okay. So what we need to do now is obviously, first things first, is remove the body. Now another thing to do, as you know, make sure you keep the clips, obviously, with your body clips safe. Um, to remove this one, there's a screw there. Um, this will actually fold away and move to the side. But there's, what's what we got? One, 2.5. And then one, two, three, four, five, two mil mi millimeters that can actually be uh, removed. Then at the bottom, all right, to actually get the diff, you've got two motor mount screws and then the housing, one, two, three, and two mil as well. So I'm just going to remove that quickly. Uh, time lapse you a second, go for me. Right guys, so as you can see, that was the diff that's come out. Now, one thing to mention you, as you can see, this, this diff housing is different to what's actually been provided. All right, the one that's come at, as part of the 6S, and I know it's the right parts because I actually selected them myself, but they've actually provided it with a composite housing. Now, I've just rung Owen, I've spoken to him. In my opinion, you'd be better off transferring the gear in from you into this metal case and then reusing this metal case. Um, I can't see this any anything being wrong with this, but in my opinion, you're better off with a metal casing. So there's something to note. The other thing here, guys, all right, so bearing in mind this is, it's been about 10 minutes now. And remember we said about how little diff oil was actually in the diff. See that? And as you notice, we had it like this. We were trying to drain out the diff oil. That is the whole total of what Absema has provided inside that diff case. Literally, all they've done is wet the gears up. And even just a dribble. So I don't think there's going to be much cleaning. Look, see? Nothing rubbing off them. So that is the grand total of what Absema has put inside you. 
So, um, strange one, really, because, I mean, even with armour and stuff like that, I noticed that they, you know, obviously make sure there is a little bit of diff oil in each case. But this one, absolutely nothing at all. So, um, I think the plan is here now is we, I'm going to strip this one down. All right. And, in fact, let's do it while we're on camera, shall we? Let's have a look at the state of the case in here. And then I'll be able to make a, a decision on whether we're going to transfer the gear in from this one into, sorry, the gear in from the new case into this one or just leave the composite as it is. Now, in my opinion, the metal housing is going to give you a lot more longevity. Um, but I can't see the composite actually really making a huge difference. It's just more of whether you want to do it or not, I think, personally. So that's the gear in from the old car. As you can see, there's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely fine. So he has got space for your gear. Uh, bearing, take that off. And then... So that obviously that was the state of the previous there. Um, I'm just going to get a screwdriver. Have I got a 1.5 here? Yeah. So we'll just take this gear in out a second. And then take out the sun gear. If I can get it out. Mm -mm -mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Because I did clean all this out previously a bit awkward I uh, might need to get some pliers on this right pause be back right back two seconds right sorry about that just need to get a get set of pliers obviously to remove it then take the pin out okay so that's the pin out and then remove obviously your uh, drive shaft hub or cap. Remove the O rings and the wash the washer, the shim. And actually, guys, to be honest with you, with a bit of cleaning, that'll be absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to give this another quick clean now, um, and basically just give it a wipe out. I'll probably put some uh, isopropyl on there just to make sure it's all nice and clean, and then we'll transfer the gear in from the new case into the old case and then go from there. Right, so here's an odd one for you guys, okay? I've had to transfer all the gearing back into the composite case. So, and Seema in all their wisdom uh i've basically made a design change and it doesn't actually state it on the website now what do i mean by this so obviously there's my diff case yeah this is the spur gear that comes with it i'm going to move that aside now i've tried adding this um end of my diff case here obviously with the planetary gear uh, sorry the sun gear onto the metal housing now it looks like They've made a slight change on between the two, which is really strange because when I tried adding this onto the metal case, the gears wouldn't turn. Um, so what I've had to do is basically strip it all down again and refill it with 500. As you can see, that's all settling in nicely now. All right. And what I should be able to do is plonk this on top and turn the gears no problem at all now. See, now that actually sits perfectly on top. Whereas when I tried to add it on top of the metal diff case, didn't work. So there's your answer on that one. Um, I found that quite strange actually, to be honest with you. Uh, what's your thoughts? It's strange that they've the tolerances between this and that one were that, that far off. But um, there you go. 
it's just one of them things um i i don't make the parts so i mean but me personally i think you know, there was definitely an easier way of doing this let's have a little look i want to make sure and here's my gasket it's all coming apart now as you can see right gasket back on top like so make sure you line up the screws Country's all fine Mm -hmm. screw holes are where's my screwdriver here's my little one so it looks like one is by there make sure you're careful so that's where the screw hole is there there right just dab our roll back down Make sure you don't tear the gasket. Right, so what I want to do now is match up this side to that side. Like so. And then I want to put this on top like that. There you go. And then we can apply one screw back in. And then that will give us our center. If I hadn't put 500k on it, oh my god, it's all going off today, guys. Not everything is perfect, eh? Is that center? There it goes. And we're on. No, we're not. Is that going in? Sweet baby Jesus. Finally. Finally. Right. Okay. Another one in this side. Screw that side up. So after all of that, we could have really just transferred it straight over <laughs> well you live and learn right so i had to step away you guys because this car is literally fighting me it's something terrible to actually even get it back together at the moment right okay so uh turns out i'd missed out the motor mount. that was my fault but to get it back together by the looks on things this bloody thing um excuse my french um i needed to take the top plate off and remove the electrics again but which makes no sense because um right there's a drive shaft there right uh, which makes no sense because i managed to get out without even doing it so you, you go figure yeah anyway right i need to get two screws in the bottom here don't i two screws in the bottom and then I can finally finally sew this car back up again fingers crossed but um yeah there you go right okay two screws really two one here and then one there with the 2.5 mil but uh yeah sometimes it's better just to step away from a scenario don't hack it I'll try and make things work. Take a breather <laughs> and reevaluate. Okay, so attached. Finally. Finally, finally, finally. What I'm gonna do now is tighten up these motor screws. Which is the wrong way. Right, that's one, two, and then we need to put the other screws back in then, don't we? So one, two, three, but they in a two mil. But man, yeah, it, uh, it, it's fought me, that's for sure. Mm 
here you go. We got mesh. Fine. Yeah, sorry for this being a long one, guys. But um, sometimes it's nice to document it just to show you guys that everything I do isn't always perfect. Um, and also, so sometimes you can come across issues. off the bottom so that's all screws there that should be all together now mesh is perfect right as you can see set the diff is now in all right um, it does seem a little bit tight in mine to be honest with you but but it's all lining up nicely so what I might do is readjust the pinion mesh uh, just to get it right That seems good, and then you should be able to. Yeah, so the front wheels want to turn now, so that's a good thing. Right, top deck, which is the electrics, that needs to go back on, like so. There we go. The screw goes in there, and I need to pop that three mil screw back in. Just an awkward design, really, the way they've done it. And I really think Absima, to be honest with you, could have done better with designing some of the parts on the car. Um, now, it's just like every car, it's got its caveats, all right? So, I, I, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's how the car performs. Um, some cars are a pig to work on. Some cars are an absolute breeze. But yeah this one i found quite awkward it's like this screw at the back here you know obviously if you need to remove this electronics part um section then should we call it the tray um it's so close this rear knuckle and every time you turn your screwdriver you end up bashing your fingers against the hub so not pleasant not pleasant at all unless you've got a great big long screwdriver now most of us will only have these so yeah why they couldn't have just put the screw at the top i don't know never mind right okay so that's that in then we need to re-add the plate on top let's get that on you that then sits like so Just been a bit of a peak to work on, really, to be honest with you. Um, the two long screws go at the back, if I remember rightly. Or do they? That's the question. Have I got that right? Let's try the shoulder screws here, should we? Right, that's one. Now we're cooking on gas, guys. Right, okay, so that's in. This plate then needs to sit down like so. We need 2.5 mil for that. Right, and then back to these two mil screws. Perfect. Okay, um, connect my motor wires again. So, blue to blue. Yellow to yellow. Orange to orange. Right, I need to put that back in the servo box. Uh, 
So let's remove that. Uh, receiver box. One to turn, two to burn. Make sure the screws, uh, sorry, the cables are down inside the case, like so. Right, that goes back on like that. Aerial goes back through. Aerial goes back through like so. Okay, let me screw that back down. Right, okay, so that's that. There's my wires. I need to put the wheel back on. But uh, yeah, he's now got a fully serviced Absima torch. Um, I'll pause the video, get some batteries, and we'll test out to see if the center diff and everything is working. Mesh sounds good, so I'm not really that bothered about change, changing that pinion about. Two point five mil. What have I done with that? Two mil. Two point five is somewhere. <laughs> there you go. I just want to check. Because we loosened it off, I just thought I haven't really locked tight to these screws. Put a bit more on, should we? Make sure you wipe off any excess. Nice shiny new spur gear in there as well. Right. They're all locked tighted in, so that's fine. Right, pause it, get some batteries, be right back. Right guys, so uh, this car fought me from start to end. Um, now, you should swap the disc around. All better. Right, put the head cam on, take it out in the street quickly and show you the difference. Right guys, so as you can see, we got Owen's Absima torch. Just wanna check everything is working. Have it down the street a second before we hand it back to him. The diff seems to be fine. Ha 
it's like going up on a back wheels van. As you can hear, it's pretty windy today. Right guys, so that's the car all done with. Um, that's pretty successful. I'm gonna have a go a little pro uh, programming the ESE and stuff like that now. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed he's gonna enjoy this. The car does handle uh, a lot better than what it did. Uh, center diff is done, all the car is serviced, and yeah, fingers crossed he's gonna enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you check the box for more videos. See you later.